uh, Oliver, I just filled in for you, so you're going to now make me look stupid and take my job. <laughs> but uh, Well, I, I was able to hear it, and you basically took the words out of my mouth. All right, it, okay, go ahead. It, it seems like the, the market and the traders are starting to realize that this tension between Russia and Ukraine is much more than a wheat story, but also a corn story, with a lot of uncertainty here in the States as we head towards that spring planting season, where weather is still going to be a big what if, and then also the input costs, as you had mentioned. So there's uh, just a lot of money flying around here. I think there's probably still more upside in the corn market. Wheat got overextended to the upside. We saw a lot of uh, FOMO or the fear of missing out. And you can see that in the wheat ETF or the exchange traded fund, basically like a stock that correlates with the wheat market. On average, that ETF trades about 300,000 shares a day. Last week, we saw it reach 27 million shares. So you saw mom and pop rushing into the wheat market like it was a meme stock. Uh, little did they know that wheat ETF was only 20% in the May contract. The rest were in deferreds. And so you're seeing a lot of pain uh, in, in some of these markets where people are just chasing the momentum and then it collapses. Now you're seeing the corn market finally pick up the pieces a little bit. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue to be a leader here into the end of the week. So when the milkman goes long milk futures, it's time to sell. So let's bring back in Oliver Slope from Blue Line Futures in Chicago, Oliver. Anything uh, interesting to say about the livestock? Well, we, we started out the week pretty well. We ended last week poorly, started this week rather well, but we put a note out to caution uh, clients this morning that is this a sustainable rally here to start the week or is this just a dead cat bounce? And I think yesterday was really a caution flag, especially in the feeder cattle market where we saw corn sharply lower and feeders really unable to get a bid where you'd think that feeders would benefit from lower corn prices. Today, you're obviously seeing corn higher and that's putting a little extra pressure on the feeder cattle market. So we're we're marking lower highs and potentially uh, on the verge of taking out lower lows. So I'm a little bit nervous here in the very near term. However, there are some bullish seasonals that start next week for live cattle and feeder cattle, December live cattle and October feeder cattle. So that's going to be on our radar. If we get a little bit deeper correction here, I think there will be a buying opportunity at some point. Now, Lean hogs, uh, uh, not very friendly on the chart, especially that April contract. We're starting to form a little bit of a head and shoulders. And if we take out the recent lows near 98, I think there's a lot of error below the market. We know that the funds have a pretty decent net long position too. So right. a technical breakdown could spur that uh, that next move lower. Excellent content. Really, pre I'm, I'm glad we got your microphone back. That's what I say about that. Appreciate you being on Oliver Slow Blue Line Futures.